Pepa, you have a cloud. I know, Mama, but now I can't find Antonio. What do you want from me? Because of that contagion effect with these strong emotions like being sad, being upset, being anxious, it's catchy to everyone else that's around you. And for Abuela, she's noticing right away she could hear, she could feel it, and you saw her face start to frown. So what Peppa was feeling, everyone else starts to feel. And I think that this is common for a lot of households. If one person in the house is really angry or really sad or really happy, the rest of the house is gonna absorb that emotion. And those of us that lean towards being more empathic, super feelers, we absorb that much more strongly. So sometimes when you feel angry or upset or worried, it's not actually yours. You're catching it from someone else. My baby's night has to be perfect and it's not perfect. And people are going to be coming. You're not the naming the flower, the flower. And so sometimes when someone's saying, you know what, stop being so anxious, stop being so angry, they're doing it not actually because they care about how you feel, hopefully they do, but because it's bothering them, they're starting to absorb it as well. And I think that we need to be aware of one, how our feelings might be affecting everyone else around us, but also how we're being affected by everyone around us as feelings. And so I often say you should be careful about the people that you surround yourself with, especially if you're more absorbent to other people's feelings. Dear, jeez. Sorry, sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to shoo, shoo, shoo. <laughs> and haven't we all felt that sometimes when we're really angry or we're brooding or we're upset and we're worrying? And because of that, our reactions, how we exude these feelings causes shock or distress to everyone else that's around us. And we feel bad for the fact that we're affecting everyone so strongly. We need to be a little bit self-aware that we're sometimes shedding off our emotions and giving it to other people to carry. Sometimes we're doing this because we're not actually aware that we're that deeply in this emotion and it affects all of our mannerisms and how we feel. Sometimes we're doing it to actually shed off some of that anxiety and being upset upon other people so they can help us carry it. And sometimes we just want some empathy. We just want someone else to notice and say, hey, I can tell you don't feel that good right now. It's gonna be all right. The name we do not speak. Great. Now I'm thundering. And a thunder will lead to a drizzle. And a drizzle will lead to a sprinkle. You can see that when she starts to get upset, she cycles. That's when you're telling yourself a story inside of your head and it's spinning faster and faster. And so when she heard of the name we don't speak of, Bruno, because we should totally speak of this, it's causing her distress. <gasps> Clear skies. Clear skies. <sighs> Clear skies. And she's trying to do some breathing and think positively so that her emotions don't get the best of her. Why breathing, distraction techniques, positivity works to lower our stress level? One is that breathing actually lowers our distress signals because our brain says that if I'm doing slow deep breathing, I mustn't be being chased by a tiger. Second, when we're thinking positive things, that means that things are gonna be okay, I guess, the world is not gonna crumble around me. And distraction techniques. Sometimes we just need to think about something else so that we're not practicing being anxious or angry or worried. Because how do you get better at something? Just keep on doing it. And those neurons that fire together are gonna wire together. That means that any neural pathway is like a road. And the more that you go down that road in a certain pathway, the deeper that rut of that pathway becomes, more of those neurons are going to align in that straight path. That is what learning is. So whatever you're doing at any moment, you're physically modifying your brain to become better at it. And so being self-aware of what you're doing at every moment can greatly enhance your skills and your control over what your brain gets better at. And for Peppa, she doesn't want to get better at being anxious, being worried, and being angry. Often we think that skills are different than emotions, but they're not. They're still neural pathways. So the more that you are angry, the more your brain is modified to become faster and more equipped to be angry, better at being angry. So if you you don't want to be better at being angry. You want to help your brain not go over those pathways again and again and again. Ta-da! <laughs> 
Okay, I forgot the earrings. Um, I don't want to redo the beginning of the video, but I really wanted the earrings on. So in the middle of the video, magic, uh, I suddenly have these earrings on. <laughs> We don't talk about Bruno! What if you didn't understand what he saw? We don't talk about Bruno! But She's been holding this in, and because it's a taboo subject, you can tell right away that she cannot wait to be able to share this information. And often when we've bundled up hurt and feelings, they grow inside of ourselves. If you've ever played that game Broken Telephone, that's what happens when our brain tells herself a story over and over and over again. It alters. It becomes solidified. So much so that everyone might have gone through this really important event, but everyone will see it and say it as completely different because we're reacting to it through the facets of our fears and hopes and dreams and anxieties. And you see the way that she colors the story? We often have a bias, a cognitive bias when we're telling a story. We often want to be accurate, but we want to paint ourselves in a better light and paint those that have harmed us or hurt us in a worse light. Why? Because we care what other people think about us. We're trying to garner people to head on over to our side of the story. And so she paints Bruno in a very negative light. I have to say, every single time that we actually saw Bruno, he's always adorably cute. I've never seen him with this mischievous grin. You know, it's a cute grin, or a boyish grin, or a sheepish grin. You're telling this story, right. And because she wanted her wedding day to be wonderful and perfect, she had a lot of anxiety, and because of that, we can get really reactive. It's normal when we want everything to be a certain way that even something small, we might have a lot of emotional reactivity to. Bruno says it looks like rain. Doing so, he floods my brain. She started to cycle through her thoughts. Now, she put a lot of this onto Bruno, where a lot of it also has to do with the way that we interpret things. And because everyone looks at what Bruno says as a prophecy, she already felt that negativity. And because of that negativity, she created this self-fulfilling prophecy that not only was it rain, but it ended up being a hurricane. What I would have Pippa practice would actually be go through worry thoughts and then be able to practice her breathing, her positivity, her distraction techniques, like she did when she was inside of the room, which I think she did a really good job at it. Because she can physically understand by visually seeing the way that she feels, she's able to control it. And for us, if we're able to understand how we physiologically respond to different emotions, then we can also practice not being so outwardly reactive to them. The three techniques are really effective, but they're techniques. You need to practice them. These are not things that are just tricks that are going to work immediately. The more that you practice them, the better you're going to get at them. And I would practice it, one, by first just practicing the different techniques, getting good at them, and then doing them in closer and closer to in vivo, in real life, experiences and emotions, feeling upset or sad, and then actually going through the techniques that you've practiced. Peppa, the cloud. And for Peppa, sometimes even though she's practiced these techniques, but because her anxiety from finding out about this information is so great, it is greater than her skills at being able to control her emotions. And the more you practice the skills, the better you'll get at them. And the stronger and stronger emotions you'll be able to keep in check and not have them overflow outside of you. So magic that you've got, the miracle is you. <laughs> that always gets me. I just love how excited they are. People like Pippa that have their emotions flow out of them. They're trusting and they're caring. They don't have that need to have to wall everything in. They're able to express it and show it. When they show it, it's exuberant and freeing. They don't mind being vulnerable and they don't mind being able to wear how they feel on their sleeve. All of you, all of you. I love that she runs over, like she gives him such a hug, she lifts him up off the ground and gives him that 
big squeeze, that hug that really shows that I love you and I miss you. She had all of this anger and this upset and this frustration, but you could tell when she saw him, none of that mattered anymore. Pepper, I'm sorry about your wedding, didn't need to be upset. Because we're gonna find our way. And you could tell how accepting she was when Bruno was giving this apology. Her face was happy and light. There wasn't any more animosity that was there. She had told herself this story all the time, but it felt like a house of cards because in her mind she had made that the intention of what he did was to try to ruin her wedding day. She really understood that his intention was good and loving. Then she could take a look and change the way that she saw this situation, that it was out of love, not out of maliciousness. And all of that pain just seemed to melt away from her. Yeah. So I wish I had added this scene to Isabella and Louise's videos, but I'll mention them really quickly. I love that Isabella ends up owning who she really is inside and she throws down the flowers and she ends up colored and kind of makes this noise that is not at all like a princess and her hair is kind of messy and the colors are all over her dress and she kind of owns it and for Louisa <laughs> The donkeys come and take care of you almost as good as a donkey corn and they throw her into the hammock so that she can practice relaxing. And one of the donkeys even brings her a little drink. When we see Peppa, she's dancing under this cloud with snow falling down. So she's learned to understand and embrace even when she's feeling upset or worried. She's no longer upset or ashamed about it. She's actually embracing all of her emotionality and being okay with it because it's okay even if we're not okay. I don't want people to feel like their emotions are running them and that they have no control over them, but I also don't want people to feel ashamed about being upset or angry or worried. A lot of times we've had to stifle our own emotional growth to make other people feel okay because other people don't want us to feel distressed because it causes them distress. We've closed in all of those emotions and they only bubble out when they're too strong because when we hold them in for all of this time, they have to have somewhere to go. Often they express themselves in really unhealthy ways. I think that this scene shows Peppa being able to understand her feelings, embrace them and enjoy them. So hopefully you are practicing embracing your emotions, even the ones that you may not like all the time and also not have them be able to control you. And if you like this video, please hit subscribe. And if you like this video and want to find out the next time that I'm going to be releasing one, you can please hit subscribe.